Have you ever heard about the amazing capabilities of OM Systems Image Overlay? This powerful feature allows you to combine multiple RAW images into one single RAW file. You can use it to create double exposures, simulate an ND filter, remove image noise or perform exposure blending. All in camera. My name is Thomas Eisel. I'm a professional photographer from Vienna, Austria. Image overlay is an in-camera post-processing function found in practically every Olympus and OM system camera. Even some e-system DSLRs like the Olympus E5 have it. The feature can be used to overcome certain technical limitations of digital photography as well as for creative effects. This expert guide covers all technical details and practical applications. Let me give you a basic technical overview first. Image overlay can be accessed via the playback menu. Most OM system cameras can merge up to three captured RAW pictures in one go. Some cameras, like the Olympus E5, can merge up to four RAW images at once. I've already brought up the playback menu of my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I. Pressing OK will bring up a submenu. In this submenu, I just have to select Image Overlay. By pressing OK again, I get the Image Overlay submenu. Here I can select all the available image merge options. In case of the EM1, I can pick two images merge or three images merge. Let's go with the latter option. Pressing OK again will now send me back to the image overlay playback screen. Here I can select two additional images to create the overlay. Let's pick those two. After selecting the third image, the camera will automatically bring up the image overlay edit screen. In practice, there is no limitation to the total number of images which can be combined, because overlays saved in RAW format can in turn be combined with other RAW images to create new overlays. The gain of each individual image can be adjusted separately from times 0.1 to times 2. This value is used to control the tonal values aka the brightness of the final composite. The tonal values of the individual images are multiplied by the set gain value. The image overlay edit screen allows me to set the gain value for each individual image. By default, all images are set to times one. So 100% of the tonal data in the given image is utilized to create the overlay. Let's adjust this a bit by bringing it down to 0.1, for example. You can see the preview gradually darkening. Let's bring down the second image as well to 0.1. And the image gets a bit darker. And now the last image, also 0.1, to really demonstrate the effect. And you can see that the resulting image would be very dark. That's how you adjust the gain. Image Overlay creates a RAW file and a JPEG for preview purposes. The JPEG output is determined by the currently set picture mode and the associated subsettings like sharpness, contrast, saturation and gradation. The resolution and compression of the JPEG is determined by the image quality settings. Note that the alignment of the overlaid images remains unchanged. To fully understand what image overlay does, it is necessary to dive a bit deeper. Let's start with a quick primer on bit depth and ADC precision. A 12-bit RAW is able to store 4096 tonal values per channel. Below, you can now see a scale representing exactly 4096 tonal values. In most situations, 
the bit precision of the analog to digital converter is not sufficient to provide full 12 bits of tonal data. So let's assume a theoretical ADC provides 8 bit of image data. This means 256 values per channel. The new strip above the 12 bit strip represents 256 values evenly distributed. Red indicates missing tonal values. Note that bit precision does not affect the white and black point. So what about the missing values? Well, they are either interpolated or show up as gaps in the raw histogram, a phenomenon known as picket fence. Here is where image overlay comes into play. When multiple raw photos of the same scene are recorded, subtle changes in light and the electronic signal will lead to slight frame-to-frame -frame variations. In practically every case, merging multiple photos with image overlay will therefore improve the bit precision as the gaps will be filled in. More nuanced tonal values compared to a single RAW file are to be expected. Viewed in camera, the merged RAW files sometimes do not look like they contain any extra tonal values. This is because the in-camera preview is based on 8-bit JPEGs and only a fraction of the available data can be displayed. However, using in-camera or external RAW processing, the complete range of tonal values stored in the merged 12-bit RAW files can be accessed and utilized either selectively or completely. Image overlay can therefore drastically improve the image quality, even of modern cameras like the OM system OM1, which has excellent bit precision to start with and is able to fill a lot of the gaps with one shot. A final note, Depending on the set gain and image brightness of the selected photos, the tonal values accumulate until they reach the point of clipping. In case of the 12-bit RAW file, this is around 4000 for each channel. Image overlay can be used to create double or even triple exposures with full control over the output even after the images have been captured. Here is how to do that. Silhouettes of interesting objects are a great starting point for double exposure photography. That's why I set up a Hasselblad 500CM in front of a white paper background. The paper background itself is illuminated by two studio flashes. My goal is to blow out the white background and just leave the black silhouette of the Hasselblad 500CM in front of it intact. My Olympus OMD EM1 Mark I is on a tripod, here is the flash trigger. Yeah, and that's about it. So, I'd say we are ready to take this shot. Here we go. And this looks very promising already. Let's check if we succeeded in blowing out the background. And yes, here we can see that most of the white background is blown out. That's the perfect starting point for double exposure photography. So now I just have to capture a second photograph to superimpose on this existing shot. See you in a minute. Now it is time to capture the second photograph that we need for our double exposure image overlay. For this purpose, I've positioned a sheet of paper with a nice pattern on it in front of my OMD EM1 Mark I, which is on a tripod. For best results in this case, I apply plus one exposure compensation. I really want the pattern to be a bit brighter. And that's it. I just have to take the shot. Looks great. So now we have all the ingredients that we need for our in-camera image overlay double exposure. Here is the silhouette shot of the Hasselblad and here is the pattern. 
Finally, we are ready to create the composite. So let's bring up the playback menu and select the first image, in this case, the silhouette of the Hasselblad by pressing OK. Then this little menu will come up. And second item from top is of course image overlay. Let's press OK again. And now we just have to select two images merge, which is the first option that comes up. The next step is selecting the pattern that we want to combine the silhouette of the Hasselblad with. After a bit of calculation, the OMD EM1 presents us with the first overlay and the gain menu. At the moment, the gain for the Hasselblad image is set to 1 and the gain for the pattern is set to 1 as well. I want to bring up the gain for the Hasselblad a bit, let's say to around 1.4. By doing so, I make sure that the background is really blown out. So the white is saturated and no pattern will show up in the background. The gain for the pattern can be reduced a bit to darken the Hasselblad in the center. Let's say 0.7 is about right. The setting of 0.7 also preserves the details on the Hasselblad itself. So that's about right. By pressing OK, we will get another dialog where we can select whether we are happy with the image overlay and we are. So let's press OK again. Now this is the final result. As you can see, we've properly blown out the background and the Hasselblad in the center has this very funky pattern. There is still some detail remaining and I'd say that's a pretty usable result. Of course we can refine this result even more in camera. So let's press OK and select Raw Data Edit. By doing so we can access the Raw Data Edit menu and we go to Custom 1. There we can configure all settings of the RAW file. Let's start on top. Of course we're gonna select the highest quality large super fine. For this image I think the pop art filter would be a great match. White balance sunny, that's about right. And exposure compensation, let's reset that to zero and press the record button. This will update the preview. So this on the screen right now is the edited raw file. We are looking at the JPEG output here. I'd say it's too bright so I'm gonna lower the exposure a bit. Let's go to minus two and that's already a lot better. Maybe something in between like minus 1.3 is even better and I'd say that's pretty cool. In this case there is no need to adjust the highlights and shadows I'd say and we are done. Let's press OK, export the JPEG and take a look at the final result on the screen right now. Image overlay can be utilized to perform frame averaging. The achievable results are very similar to what is possible with the Live ND computational mode found in newer OM system and Olympus camera models. In a way, image overlay can be thought of as manual Live ND. As I've illustrated in my Live ND expert guide, Frame averaging can be used for either blurring movement, simulating the effect of an ND filter, or it can be used to remove image noise and improve detail rendition. And here is how you do that. In the first demo, I will show you how to utilize frame averaging to get rid of practically all image noise. In order to do that, the scene has to be photographed with the same exposure settings and the camera has to be stabilized. So preferably you have to put it on a tripod like I did here. Let's photograph this test scene with a ridiculously high ISO setting. Let's select 25600 on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark 1. 
That's very extreme for this relatively old camera. Okay now, we're gonna take three shots of this scene. One, two, and three. Let's take a look at the shots on the back screen. And they are, of course, terribly noisy. But with frame averaging, we can get rid of almost all the image noise and get an incredibly detailed image. So let's go bring up the image overlay menu and select three images merge. The more the better. Here are the three shots of the test shot. This preview is of course too bright because the gain value of each individual image is set to times one. In order to maintain the overall image brightness, we have to adjust the gain settings so that they add up to times one in total. By setting the first image to time 0.4, the second image to time 0.4 as well, and the third one to time 0.3, we get a total gain value of times 1. And you can already see that the resulting image is exactly as bright as the single shots. Let's press OK and confirm the composite. Note that the composite process practically did not affect the black and white point of the image. Before I explain what just happened, let me show you the noise improvement really quick. So this is the composite and this is the single image. The difference is very drastic. You can see a great amount of noise reduction and also improved edge sharpness. So the detail rendition definitely improved by doing that. So what happened here? As image noise varies at least slightly from frame to frame, in-camera frame averaging will drastically reduce any image noise or remove it altogether by averaging it out as a side effect, of course, if the camera was stable enough during capture, the final composite will exhibit improved fine detail rendition as we just saw. So you noticed that combining only three images already led to a significant noise reduction, although we shot the scene at ISO 25600. For even cleaner results, you can combine the resulting composite with additional frames. But in this case, we cannot do that because we just captured three frames. We would have had to capture more frames. In any case, of course, the demonstration with ISO 25600 is not a very realistic one because you wouldn't capture a landscape shot with a camera on the tripod at ISO 25600. But even if you capture a scene at ISO 200, this process will drastically improve the image quality depending on the camera model you are using because you are getting rid of practically all the noise thanks to the composite process. If elements in the frame are moving during the capture, frame averaging will effectively average out those moving elements, either blurring them or removing them all together. This effect can be used to, for example, blur out passing cars or remove passers-by from an architectural shot. In this demo, I will show you another neat application and that's blurring moving water. I've taken three images on the beach of the exact same scene with the OMD EM1 on a tripod. I'm now gonna combine three images of the same scene to blur the water even more effectively. I will show you the current state of blur. So I've exposed these images for about four seconds. So the water is already quite blurry, but for my taste, this is still not enough. So let's start with image overlay. In this case, I select 
three images merge because the more images I merge, the more drastic the blur effect. So here is the preview and this is of course too bright because the gain value of each individual image is set to times one. I will now reduce the gain values of each image so that in total times one is not exceeded. The preview is now very similar to the single exposures of the composite. Let's press OK and finalize the composite. For my taste, this image is a bit too bland. It's already blurred quite a bit more, so we have definitely achieved the desired effect. But we still have to improve the edit. So let's bring up the raw data edit menu. I will start with the picture mode and I'm gonna set it to pop art for way stronger colors. By pressing record I'm gonna refresh the preview. Alright, that looks drastic already, but I want definitely more reds in my image. So I'm gonna change the white balance setting to shadow. Now this looks more like it. Let's brighten the whole image by let's say plus 0.3 EV. All right, looks even better. Maybe we can try plus 0.7 EV. I think I'm pretty happy with this result and I'm gonna press OK to finalize the raw data edit and get the exported JPEG. Last but not least, Image Overlay can be used for in-camera HDR exposure blending to create a single RAW file with fine nuances across the whole tonal scale. A series of exposure bracketed images of the same scene is required. To learn how to calculate the correct bracketing settings, watch my video on professional HDR photography. Link in the description. Now on to in-camera exposure blending with image overlay. Let me show you how it is done. It is quite amazing. Our goal is to create a single HDR RAW file of this landscape shot. I've bracketed three shots and let me show you the problem. So this is exposed for the midtones, and you can already see that some color channels are hitting the clipping limit. Let's move on to the next shot. This is the underexposed shot, so it's definitely too dark in the foreground, but there is no clipping in the sky. And here is the last shot, the overexposed shot. Although it has a great range of tonal values here in the foreground, the background is just blown out. So let's get started. Generally, it is recommended to select the overexposed and underexposed image for the image overlay operation. In some cases, a three image merge is possible. In this case, I will just pick two images. Let's start with the overexposed shot, select image overlay and go for the two images merge. Now I just have to select the underexposed shot. This is the preview and this does not look very promising. The reason for that is simple. The gain values of each image are too high. The key to achieving a satisfactory result is setting the right gain level. Always start with all images set to times 0.1, the lowest setting. So from this starting point, I will now gradually increase the gain, starting with the darker image. The goal is not to blow out any color channel while raising the shadows as much as possible. So let's do this.
In this case, I will probably set the dark image to times one, and I will try to set the bright image to times 0.2 and see if I can get away with that. You notice that every adjustment to the brighter image will brighten or darken the image overlay more drastically. So you have to be very careful with setting a brighter value here. I definitely do not want to blow out the clouds over here. Well, in this case, it seems that time 0.1 is the better choice. Let's finalize the composite. Here we go. And the important step now is to examine each color channel. They should look like this. So they should neither clip in the shadows nor in the highlights. This is a perfect result because now we've got a lot of tonal values in the 12-bit RAW file to work with. In case I would have blown one of the color channels, I would just have to go back and redo the composite process with different gain values. But in this case, we are safe. So let's perform an in-camera edit because I imagine this shot to mimic Ansel Adams' black and white high dynamic range landscape shots. Let's press OK, select Raw Data Edit. Let's start on top with Large Super Fine. For the picture mode, I'm gonna go with Monotone, of course. Custom White Balance is not the choice. Let's go with Cloudy. Exposure Compensation, zero. Highlight and Shadow Adjustment, also zero. That's good, let's update the preview. And this looks already like an amazing black and white landscape shot. What I could do now is I could brighten the shadows a bit more by utilizing the shadow adjust function. What this will do is it will brighten the tonal values in the shadows. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's okay, but the image gets a bit too muted for my taste, so let's leave it to zero. Let's examine the highlight adjustment. Maybe we can bring down the sky a bit. Let's set a value of minus two. Let's increase that even more to minus four and we get lower tonal values in the sky here. Let's hit OK and examine the final result. For my taste, this is a very beautiful monochrome landscape shot representing a very wide dynamic range. Let's press OK and let me show you our in-camera edit on the screen right now. What I love about in-camera image processing features is that they help me to cut down time spent in front of my computer. OM system cameras are packed with such features. Image overlay is just one of them. If you want to learn more about in-camera workflows, watch the videos linked in the description next. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and following me on other social media. See you next time.